So switching gears a little bit about, uh, you know, currently uh, approved uh, FDA uh, medicines for, for Alzheimer's disease. Um, Mark, can you tell us a little bit about um, what they are and what's their mechanism of action um, and, you know, what do you tell people about expectations about these medicines? Sure. Well, we know we don't have a cure for Alzheimer's disease or for the other major forms of dementia. And uh, there's a lot of research that we'll talk about, but we don't yet have anything effective to slow it down. What we do have is four different FDA-approved medications that can in improve symptoms. Um, there are two different classes. The first class are called acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. Uh, they work by increasing the amount of acetylcholine in the brain. We know that early on in Alzheimer's disease in particular, and this is likely an element in other forms of dementia, that the neurons that are critical, critical for learning and memory depend upon the neurotransmitter acetylcholine to work, to function. And so as you have those cells being damaged and levels of acetylcholine dropping, by interfering with the breakdown of acetylcholine, so interfering with the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, by inhibiting it, we can increase levels of acetylcholine. We know through lots of good research that the three medications, denepazil, rivastigmine, and galantamine, can increase levels of acetylcholine and can have a uh, positive benefit, a modest one, but still positive benefit, for primarily for cognition. Um, it's important that we educate patients and caregivers that at best it's a modest impact. It doesn't slow it down, it doesn't cure it but the benefits are, are clear. Um, and so the goal is to get someone started on one of these. They're all equal in terms of efficacy, but get them started on one of them early on. Monitor for some of the most common side effects, especially GI-related side effects like nausea and vomiting and diarrhea. Uh, but to get them on initial dose, and then we titrate to an effective dose or a therapeutic dose. And that's important because sometimes doctors will start the medication, but they don't always push it to the therapeutic range, and that's really critical to do. Uh, there's another category, of which there's one medication called memantine, which is a NMDA or glutamate receptor antagonist. Uh, we know that in Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia that there appears to be um, uh, excess glutamate activity, which has a neurotoxic effect. And so memantine modulates that, reduces that effect, and we know that uh, similar to acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, can have a positive impact on cognition in particular. But modest, but positive. Because these are two different mechanisms of action, we uh, ultimately aim to combine an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor with memantine. And we know, and this is some of the research that, that you're very familiar with, uh, we know that that combination over time might be synergistic and can provide a, a better cognitive outcome. There's some data suggesting that it might have a muting effect on behavioral changes, although we know these medications have not been shown to actually treat behavioral disturbances, but um, it just speaks to their overall benefit. And uh, this is part and parcel of, of the FDA-approved treatment that we give people. And I would just add that, you know, there's so many other uh, pills and potions out there that are touted to be brain tonics that do not have efficacy, even though they have good advertising behind them, but they don't have the efficacy of these medications to be effective for Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. And so this is why these categories are the staple of our treatment. 